Welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be reacting to one of the early uploads from the YouTube channel, The Game Theorists. I'm a huge fan of their work. I hope that you will like this video as well, especially it's about bottle flipping and so Yeah. Uh, yeah, this video came out in the year 2017, so I think it's around four years ago. Let's start. Ooh. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, again, 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 again? How do they make it so look so easy? How? How? Wow! Let's just be honest, they are good. They are very good at it. Welcome to Game Theory! Hello! I love it when he just, um, instead of using Hello Internet, he uses Hola Internet! <laughs> Hola! Where, shout out to the true first comment on the We Broke YouTube Game Theory, the Nian Robot. Thanks, Nian Robot, for ringing that subscription bell and being a part of the notifications. <coughs> Quad. That's something I'm looking to do more regularly on the channel, by the way. Make those first comments count, and shout out you guys who are the first comers every week to the show. Because you know what? You guys rock. Thank you so much for supporting the channel over all these years. Anyway, onward to today's episode. Which yeah. Dude, this episode is going to be fun. Which is going to make you flip. Or, at the very least, give you the secret hacks that you need to become the mic-dropping finale at your school's talent show. <laughs> But in all seriousness, of all the trends to hit big in 2016, bottle flipping was perhaps the most surprising. Sure, we expect the collective mind of the internet. Let me introduce you to the internet. Don't worry, everything will be okay. I'm from the internet. <laughs> to dredge up long forgotten childhood shows, ironically appreciate terrible movies, recreate popular dance moves, or latch on to trending news stories, but flipping bottles of water so that they can land correctly? That was the big thing of 2016? I mean, I act like it's surprising, but when you really stop to think about it, its massive popularity makes a lot of sense. It's something literally anyone can do, watch, and appreciate. How oh, does this kids make it look so easy how ah how you see it happen and you understand it regardless of how old you are or what language you speak. It's a game that anyone can play for free and when you get really good and practice a lot or just have the magic of editing and cut to your best of a hundred takes <laughs> the magic of editing <laughs> of a hundred takes <laughs> Uh. You can do some really impressive stuff. Now for those of you who aren't familiar, here's the skinny. Bottle flipping entails taking a bottle and tossing it so that it twirls through the air like a gymnast and sticks a 10 out of 10 landing. IGN would flip again. And that's it. AAA game companies, take note. This is the type of game that people want to play these days. <laughs> now, despite what Know Your Meme might say, the origins go back as far as 2007 to a video oh. released by a skateboarder named Ben Daleman. But it was this video I alluded to earlier, Michael oh. Senator's epic flip during his school talent show last year that really caused people to flip out over the flip. From there, it was a short... I'm sorry, what? <laughs> a talent show for Philippe Portos. Huh. Huh. Okay. 
trip off to the land of the YouTubers with everyone from Ryan Higa, Dude Perfect, and Fern and Flu giving this trend the viral fire that it needed. But then, why am I talking about this on Game Theory? Well, because it is a game. It's the ultimate mobile game. And also, honestly, it's because a lot of you have been eagerly asking for a more science-heavy episode. And let me tell you, for as elegantly simple as bottle flipping might be, scientifically, it's a completely different story involving everything from elasticity of collisions to fluid dynamics to momentum to laws of gravity, and if you- I'm sorry, what? Elasticity of collision, fully uh, dynamics, momentum, laws of gravity? Why? Why do you think so hard for just flipping bottle? Why? understand that science, you'll actually have an unfair advantage in your next bottle flipping tournament, or oh. at your next school talent show, or your next visit to grandma's house, or whenever you want to flip a bottle to impress people. Might I recommend your first date? And sure, I get it, yeah, you probably don't want to do it anymore anyway since you've moved on to the next viral bottle-based trend, like pulling dollar bills out from under bottles. Whatever, okay, I know this episode is an old trend, but damn it, these things take time to research. So here it is, the scientific cheat code that'll get you the upper hand in the world of bottle ballistics. Oh come on, don't say that. I feel so old given that this video is four years ago. Mmm, man, I feel old. So before you start pitching your old plastic around, your flip can either be made or lost by the very first choice that you make, the bottle. <sighs> Think about it, there are hundreds if not thousands of different brands of bottled water on the market, and almost all of them have different bottle shapes, heights, even thicknesses of plastic, and picking the right one can make the difference between becoming a flipping champ or a flipping chump. So if you think oh. of bottle flipping as a video game, then think of your choice of bottle as the difficulty slider. The typical bottle most people are using, rounded bottle, thin plastic like Poland Springs, those are effectively the normal setting, not- Yeah, the, it's the one that I'm using, that, that I used too hard, not too easy, just a good sweet spot to judge other bottles. But what in particular makes this one the ideal middle-of-the-road candidate? Well, let's take two other bottles and it'll all become clear. A water cooler jug and a bottle of Diet Coke, because, let's be honest, I have a problem. <laughs> oh my gosh, another Diet Coke reference? Hmm. Now, the Diet Coke bottle is the bottle flipping equivalent of hard mode, and the reason for that is surface area. Notice that the bottom isn't round like the other two, but rather has multiple prongs. Now, under normal usage, that's a great shape. It gives the bottle added stability. In fact, as someone who has an unhealthy addiction to soda, and by proxy a lot of useless knowledge about the history of soda, I can tell you, in the early days of two-liter bottles, they needed an extra black cap at the base of the bottle to maintain the bottle's ability to stand up. That system existed until it became difficult to recycle the two separate plastic pieces, and a new process had to be designed, these pronged bottles. Man, Diet Coke, you truly are a work of art. Wow, the design aspect of it is interesting, huh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, all you other sodas who have the exact same bottle, you're fine too, but Diet Coke, beautiful, both inside and out. For normal use anyway, when flipping bottles, it is a completely different- Oh my god, did, did you just say normal use? <laughs> story. You see, in physics, the energy of being in motion is called kinetic energy, and the word elasticity is a measure of how much kinetic energy remains as kinetic energy after two objects combine. To give you an example, let's look at anime, in a scene that, now that I watch it over again, I should really be covering over on film theory. I mean, look at his face collapse in. There is so much science that I could cover in that thing. Anyway, Goku punches Krillin in the face. Goku's fist has a bunch of kinetic, or movement energy. That then gets transferred into Krillin villain's face and body, launching him off for miles. So one would say that the elasticity of that Ooh, that hurts. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch collision of fist to face is really high. The kinetic energy of Goku's fist stays as movement energy as Krillin flies through the air. Seriously though, the more times I watch this scene over and over, the more I realize I need to cover that over on film theory. Making a note right now. So that's an elastic collision. The more classic and boring example that you've probably heard in school are two pool balls hitting each other. Alternatively, there are inelastic collisions, where the kinetic energy is transformed into deforming the material, or where energy is lost in other ways, like 
heat and sound. The Goku punch example isn't perfectly elastic because some of his punch energy is lost deforming Krillin's face. <laughs> Look at that, that has gotta hurt. If Krillin has one superpower outside of Destructo Discs, which are really cool, it's Destructo Discs. <laughs> The fact that he is like a human punching bag, he takes punishment for days. A good example of an inelastic collision is two balls of clay thrown together. They stick, there is no bounce. Oh. All the kinetic energy of the two balls moving is lost as they deform into one larger ball. Now, knowing all that, look at our bottle flip. It's plastic hitting a table, so the collision will be mostly elastic. Oh, movement energy transfers from one object to another. Huh. Interesting. So there's different types of energy. There'll be um, elastic collision and there'll be, oh, sorry, there'll be different type of collisions um, that he mentioned um, elastic collision and inelastic collision. Wow. Huh. Interesting. Something very educational like the pool balls, where the kinetic energy of the bottle falling is preserved. In fact, we measured and it's a force of about 50 newtons. That in and of itself isn't too much, but the table isn't gonna move, right? So that movement energy has to go somewhere, and that's back into the bottle, which is oh. causing it to bounce. The plastic of the bottle compresses ever so slightly and then springs back into position, just like an actual spring, causing it to rebound from the table and potentially costing you your glorious moment at the talent show, and the subsequent tour around the talk show circuit and I was so close to you Jimmy Fallon one day one day now 50 <laughs> I love to say one day one day <laughs> Newton's isn't going to cause a whole lot of bounce when it's spread out over a wide surface, like say the rounded bottom of your average water bottle, but the prongs? That force gets moved to the very small area that's actually hitting the table, causing the bottle to rebound higher and thus making it harder to get that perfect landing. On the other end of the spectrum are the large jugs of water. While YouTube channels might try to make this seem like it's super impressive that they're just landing these flips, that these are the most extreme flips out there. <laughs> The most extreme flips out there! Super impressive! <laughs> They're just wrong! Or lying to you. More yeah. clickbait. These things are flipping easy mode. Pa <gasps> oh, shots fired! Flipping easy. Get it? Part of it is the huge surface area of the base, but to see why these are the clear choice for any flipping noobs, we need to talk about the other elephant in the room, finding the perfect water level. Empty water bottles weigh practically nothing. My pro level flip bottle weighs in at a mere 17 grams. And if you have an empty water bottle just sitting on the table, its center of mass, which is basically the point on the bottle where all the mass averages out, is right around the middle. But water is a lot heavier than plastic. And when you put something that's significantly more massive, like so uh, yes, if you increase the water, um, water, water level, the the center of mass will lower, 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 lower. Instead of center of mass, I remember we normally call it under normal circumstances. We normally call it CG, center of gravity. Water into a bottle, the center of mass is gonna move. In this case, it moves downward. There's more mass on the bottom of the bottle than on the top, and thus the place where the mass averages out is gonna end up a lot lower. Now, why is that important? Because the center of mass sometimes goes by another name, the center of gravity. CG, center of, center of gravity, CG. And gravity, as the biggest thing standing between you and that perfect bottle flip, pulls from the center of gravity. So the lower the center of gravity is, the less likely that bottle is gonna tip over when you flip it. Think about it this way. And Edward, huge clap and a half to you to be demonstrating visually how this all works, because this is the sort of thing that, sure, I can explain it the best I can, but it really helps to see it. So A plus on the visuals. <laughs> yes, A plus on the visual. Clip and a half. <laughs> Even though I'm recording this before the visuals are done, so don't screw it up, Edward. Don't do it. Don't you screw it up, Edward. If you do, no one will understand this concept and the entire episode is ruined. The pressure's on. 
about it this way. When the center of mass is lowered and you, say, tip the bottle to the left, the center of gravity of the bottle is hovering over the right side. This means that the Earth is pulling on the right side of the bottle, which makes it want to stand back up instead of falling over, thus allowing you to walk off the high school stage head held high. But if you overfill the bottle with water, now the center of gravity is much higher. The point at which all the mass has averaged out has crept back upwards. When yes. that happens and it's tipped to the left, the center of mass is now to the left of the tipping point, and gravity will pull the bottle down, causing it to fall and causing you to take the walk of shame for the rest of 10th grade. Or Ooh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Move to another school district. This is why getting just the right amount of water is tricky and essential. You need to put in enough water in the bottle so that the center of mass goes about as far down as it can get without inadvertently allowing that center of gravity to creep back upwards by overfilling. And yeah, yeah, I know that the comments are already rolling in from you general relativity fanboys. Just chill out, everything is coming up Isaac Newton today. You'll have your relativity episodes, I promise. In fact, if I remember right, I think that the first ever episode of Game Theory touched on relativity topic so there you go hashtag an apple a day gives Newton the respect that he deserves so mathematically the ideal sweet <laughs> apple a day I thought it's an apple a day keep the dots away spot is going to be filling up that bottle to the one-third mark. It's there that the center of mass is going to be about as low as it can go. Now, obviously, all bottles are different, but for a surefire technique, eyeball the one-third location and try to tip your bottle over at a 45-degree angle and then let it go. If it falls back upright, congratulations, you did it. If it falls over, that means your center of mass is too high, so start chugging some water. Those wide, short, squat water cooler bottles are the easiest ones to flip because they're the ones where keeping the center of gravity low is a cinch. Just look at the jugs in this video. The water jugs in this dude perfect video. I mean, jeez. Oh my god. I was so excited and then it's like yeah. Family friendly, please. Please. Mm, yeah. Grow up. This is a family friendly show. Anyway, those jugs are barely filled, and that's because it doesn't take a lot of water to weigh these puppies down, getting their center of mass low. And it's gonna be really hard to fill it so high that your center of gravity is gonna result in you tipping it over. These jugs are just super stable. Now obviously you're not gonna shove a water cooler jug in your backpack to pull out during lunch hour bottle flipping tournaments with a cheesy dipper from Steve, right? So what bottle do you choose? Well, in between these jugs and our standard round-bottomed ones is everything from smart water to Fiji water, each with its own various pros and cons. Smart water's tall, narrow shape is gonna make it really hard to find that sweet spot in water line. Fiji water, being made from a firmer plastic and with a wider base, is definitely gonna be easier than a typical bottle. Just be careful of finding the water level since it's so short. The fact that it's short is gonna mean that you're gonna have to be a lot more precise in your water level measurements. And lastly, the throw. Now before we talk about bottles, let's- Wait, we have been talking for so long and not even talk about the throw? What? Talk hammers. Grab a hammer and toss it in the air. Actually, no. If you are on your way to the garage right now, stop. C come on back. C come back, please. Hopefully, hopefully you're still listening to me. <laughs> what is the first thing that I thought of is saw throwing Mjolnir. dangerous and you'll put a hole in the floor. Instead, let's visit history's most famous hammer tossers, the Hammer Bros. Hey, I thought the most famous hammer toster is Thor? I thought it's like, because he's after all the god of thunder. Oh wait, he's not the god of... He's, he's not the god of hammer, so yeah. Notice how the hammer twirls all lopsided before finally landing? Well, it's because of our old friend, center of mass. Objects in free fall that have any rotation will always rotate around their center of mass. Hammers, which traditionally have wooden handles and steel heads, have a hugely lopsided center of mass and rotate around that. But the cool part is, for as chaotic as that movement looks, if you trace the trajectory of the center of mass, it will always, always follow a perfect arc. I mean, look at any Mario game. Even though the handle's moving everywhere, the hammer head is consistent consistently falling in an arc. Well done, Nintendo. Way to pay attention to the laws of physics. Except, I guess, for an Italian plumber being able to launch himself hundreds of feet into the air. So, well done picking and choosing your physics battles? 
I guess. Anyway, but but having said that, having said that, it's still better than saying that Wario is ten. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not just saying this based on a video game. In real life, tossing hammers acts the same way. Toss a hammer safely and outside, please, and you'll see the exact same thing happen. Or better yet, watch a video on YouTube. I'm sure one exists. Here, here's one right here. Literally anything wow. you want is on YouTube. But here's the thing, for as complicated as throwing a hammer may look, a water bottle is even more complicated because fluid dynamics are involved. Which, let's be honest here, is a sentence I included to make you sound smart. Flipping a water bottle is even more complicated because fluid dynamics are involved. That is similar, that is uh, correct, that is, that's all correct. Oh, by the way, about the hammers, please don't do it, it's kind of dangerous, please don't. When you mention it to your friends because fluid dynamics for as impressive and complicated as it sounds is really just another word for the movement of liquid, fluid mm. being dynamic. Makes sense, <laughs> right? Anyway, when you- <laughs> It is the movie of water, fluid being dynamic. <laughs> Flip the bottle into the air, the center of mass is shifting as the mass of the water moves around in the bottle. As it does this, the water robs the bottle of angular momentum or spin. This becomes most dramatic just after the bottle flips, when the water sloshes around and goes from being in the bottom of the bottle to the top. It adjusts to gravity, which simultaneously helps push the bottle down, allowing for that signature straight up landing. That's true, with the angular momentum, aka the spin, um, I'm not too sure if you know about that, but well, that's what we don't can call it. How this knowledge helps you is that most newbie bottle flippers include too much horizontal velocity. You're throwing uh, the bottle too far forward. Notice uh, Michael's toss, both at the talent show and on Stephen Colbert. It barely moves forward. You see, if the uh, bottle is moving forward too fast, when it lands, the bottle's movement is suddenly stopped, but the water inside the bottle still wants to move forward. And it oh. does, which takes all the mass with it. So instead of acting like a stabilizing force inside the bottle, the water actually helps knock the bottle over. The key here is to try to use as much force upward while also putting that spin on the bottle. The best way to do this is to make sure that the bottle is parallel with the ground when you release it. This sends the center of mass straight upward, and since you're holding on to the other end, the bottle will naturally rotate as you let go. So there you have it, the steps to a perfect flip. Choose a <laughs> bottle with firmer plastic and a wide base like a Fiji bottle. Choose a bottle with firm plastic and white base, all right? Fill that bottle to about a third full. Fill the bottle to about one third full. Hmm, okay. Double checking the exact level by doing that 45 degree fall test to measure where the center of gravity is at. The 45 degree test, okay. And then practice your toss so that you release it in parallel with the ground and try- Release when it's parallel to ground? Try okay. to minimize its forward momentum. Minimize forward momentum. But if you okay. want even more of an edge, consider swapping out the water in the bottle for mercury. As the heaviest liquid at room temperature, that should lower the center of mass to amazing depths, while still maintaining all the benefits of fluid dynamics. Just, sure. uh, you know, fair warning, don't, don't drink it. Or touch it, for that matter. Or do anything with it, really, because it's toxic. Like, deadly levels of toxic. Huh, between mercury and hammer tossing, today has been filled with bad ideas. Who would have suspected that bottle flipping is the deadliest game? But hey, <laughs> that's just a th empty bottles in your bo in your house. Do you flip alone? Do you lie about how much you flip? Maybe it's time to get out. <laughs> theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. But before you go, if you'd like to see me take on the ultimate bottle flip challenge, then oh. click right here to see oh. our episode. <laughs> I love it when Stephanie just <laughs> just like, oh, it's okay, just a YouTube go button. Like, oh. <laughs> of GT Live. Winner gets the glory, loser gets the exploding soda to the face. Seriously, click there to find out if all of the techniques we've talked about in this episode help me to stay dry. Or click right here to watch something else that has been algorithmically selected to be the best video for your watch session. That's no joke, that is literally a tool that YouTube has and that I'm testing out in that box to the right. So let me know what it put there for you and whether you thought it was, in fact, the best video for your watch session. So all that being said, if you'll excuse me, I've got a rematch to attend. <laughs> see ya next week. <laughs> All right, and I'll see you next in the next video. Anyways, joking aside, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you like this video as much as I do. It's quite, it's quite educational about it. 
And yeah, um, this video came from the YouTube channel, The Game Terrorists. I hope that you do support them and show appreciation for their work. Their work is amazing, actually. And yeah, um, I hope that you like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have any channel fast. Um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll see you next time. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Let me try again, let me try again, let me try again. Huh. One, One, two, two three. three. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ta da!